I am Gyn, and here are 5 Guardian Tips. Number 1. Always use War Chant. If you want War Chant, you need to trade for it in Yellow Line. If you look further down, there is Demoralizing Anthem, which increases the targets and the range of the skill. I only use uh, 4 out of 5 points in it, because I need my points to maximize my redirect. Now let's take a look at the skill itself. Uh, 7 targets right now. Quite a big radius. War Chant is also an aggro building skill. That's also a good thing about it. As you can see, there's quite a few buffs that we'll take a look at right now. First, we'll take a look at the damage debuff you can put on them. So, let me just use War Chant. There you can see it. Minus 5% damage. And that applies for every target you hit. It's a 10 second duration and. War chant is 10 second cooldown, so that's 100% uh, uptime. So always use war chant. So next, let's take a look at war chant's other effect, which is reducing the cooldown of response skills. So every 10 seconds, you can pretty much take away 4 seconds of the cooldown of those skills. As you can see, I use War Chant and Catch a Breath cooldown just jumps back a bit. So, as I said, always use War Chant. Number 2. Delay Challenge for as long as possible. Here you have Challenge in its basic form. And let's try improving it with trading. This right here increases the range of Challenge by 100%. When you trade far enough down, you get to challenge the darkness, which gives you another 3 targets. As well as putting up the Guardian's Ward buff. So challenge in its final and best form has 10 targets, 14 meters radius, and it's a 1 minute cooldown for your taunt. So you need to be smart using this and try to delay it as long as possible in order to copy the maximum threat. Let me show you one example. This is me tanking trash mobs in TG tier 3. You can see when I run in, I pop my war chant for the initial aggro. I force taunt the TA, keeping on me for 10 seconds. And I start using my shield skills and my AoE damaging skills to get some initial aggro. Keep using war chant, AoE skills. I do this until I feel like I might lose aggro. I feel like a champion. Or the healer and that's when I use challenge. A lot of this comes down to like a feel thing which comes with experience but from what I just did you can see that they're all going to me. I have aggro of everything. It's unlikely that I'll lose aggro again if I keep using AoE skills as well as reinforcing my taunt on the TA. Number three, build your fortifications. This is what it looks like before you trade Guardian, and as you can see in blue line, there's a 25% chance for shield skills to build a fortification effect. It stacks up to tier 5, and you get 1% mitigations from each. Let's try trading a bit, see if something changes. When you trade down far enough, every time you get a crit with a shield skill, it'll give you one more stack of fortification. Your fortifications are also twice as strong which gives 2% mitigation each rank. And if we go even further down, there's another benefit. Feel the people. Which pretty much means that every shield skill has 50% chance to build the fortification buff. So every time you use a shield skill, there's a 50% chance to apply one fortification as well as a chance of getting a crit, which would give you two. Let me show you fortifications. I'm gonna pull this troll, start using my shield skills. Let's wait until I get a fortification there. Rank 1, 2% physical, 2% tactical mitigation. There you have it. 10% physical, 10% tactical, and that stays until the fight is over. The good thing about getting to tier 5 on fortifications is the fellowship wide fortification buff. 
Every member in your fellowship or raid will gain 2% physical and tactical mitigations, which makes a really strong tank for grouping. Number 4. Warrior's Fortitude. Warrior's Heart is one of many cooldowns Guardian has. Fade down into blue, get to Warrior's Fortitude, which gives it another buff. Get 2% more physical mitigation, 1% block chance, and 1% partial block chance. This stays until you're out of combat. A lot of fights have you take a big hit in the beginning, and that's when I like to use my Warrior's Heart. Not just to heal up again, but also to get that buff for as long as possible during a fight. I would advise people to use it early in a fight. You'll have it back after 2 minutes anyways. And this will give you extra mitts, more block chance, a bit of incoming healing. There's no reason you shouldn't have these buffs for the entire fight. Especially for boss fights. Now let's just see what this looks like in action. Up where is heart. There you have it. It's gonna stay there until you're out of combat. My advice is use Warrior's Heart early in a fight, especially if it's a longer fight. And number 5, Guardian's Ward. The most basic of Guardian skills called Guardian's Ward. 10 second duration buff every time you use it, and it gives you some nice buffs. The right legacies and trade it correctly, it gives you a really strong buff. For 10 seconds and you should get guardian sword into your rotation get used to using it like every 10 seconds so the two legacies you can get are guardian sword parry and guardian sword block increase on your belt and i advise every guardian to have those if you trade for tireless defender you can pretty much decrease your power consumption but it's not too bad for a guard anyways this is the big thing. You can get 20,000 more tactical mitigations with using Guardian's Ward. This should be traded for any guard. You can see the buff will gain you 18,000 parry and block, some partial parry and block chance, and 20,000 tactical mitigations. Pretty huge. There's actually another way to activate this skill as well. You trade far enough down into blue. You get Challenge to Darkness, which improves your challenge to also give you Guardian's Ward whenever you hit someone with challenge. It's the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed. Leave a like, subscribe, maybe leave a comment, and I'll be making more of these in the future.